Today I'm going to talk about display settings and how to get the most out of your display in Tecla structures. This basically comes about from a request that was left in a comment section of a recent YouTube video of mine, essentially asking me how do I make my display look the way it does with shadows and all of that. Thank you Noble Gaming for your question. So that part is actually pretty simple, that is if you're using version 2016 and higher. You simply go to the file menu and select settings, then enable DirectX rendering. You'll have to close and then reopen any views you have for the setting to take effect, and then if you want, you can also set your view projection to be perspective, at least for the 3D views. For me, perspective projection is just a little too confusing in plan or elevation view. But if that's your thing, then by all means, perspective those up as well. Well, I guess that was an easy one today. I didn't think it was going to be quite that easy. We can get this. All right, that's it. Let's shut it down. Appreciate it. Quitting time. Oh, all right. Well, I guess maybe there's a little bit more that I could talk about. So that's the simple and basic way to up your display game. But what if you want to go a step farther? Well, then I have a few advanced settings that will help you get even more out of your display. And what's better is that these settings can be used with just about any version of Tecla structures, not just those versions 2016 and up. When you first install Tecla, the initial values for the display accuracy are usually set fairly low and really meant to work on systems that maybe aren't as robust when it comes to performance. Think maybe consumer grade laptops and low end prosumer grade desktops. But if you're rocking the latest Intel Core i7 with loads of DDR4 memory and a huge power hungry PCIe graphics card, then you should really look into increasing some of these values to get the most out of your rig. Now, there are several ways to actually implement the settings, and I'm not going to go over all of them, but I will show how I'm set up, and if you want to copy me, I'm okay with that. That's fine with me. I'm actually kind of flattered. Or, if you prefer, you can insert the settings I'm going to show into your own setup. I'll put them in the video description below so you can copy and paste if you choose. Also, whichever way you go, I have a couple of recommendations. One. <coughs> Put these settings in an INI file, such as user.ini, which I'll show, or options.ini in the model folder, or whatever INI file you use for your setup. Number two, modify these settings when Tecla Structures is not running. These come about because a few of the settings are required to be in an INI file, so you might as well keep them all together. Plus, most of these settings require a restart of Tecla Structures to take effect. Also, when you change a setting in an INI file while Tecla is running, then you close Tecla, it'll sometimes rewrite that setting in the INI file to whatever the value was in the program when it was running, and then you closed it. Just make sure Tecla's not running. Now, personally, I use the INI file user.ini for almost all of my settings, and that resides in one place and is applied to all of my models. Then, if I need to make any changes or additions to a specific model, I put those in the options.ini file in the model folder of that specific model. So let's get started. First things first, you'll need to find your user.ini file. I'm currently using version 2017i, and I have a shortcut to it right here on my desktop. But it's normally found at c colon, users, username, app data, local, Tecla Structures, the Tecla Structures version, user settings. So open that in the editor of your choice. I use Notepad. Right here in the middle of the file are the settings I use for the display accuracy. Now I'm not going to go over all of these because quite frankly I'm not exactly sure what every one of them do, but I'll cover the highlights. Excess solid use higher accuracy equals true allows the profiles in your model to be displayed with radiuses where there should be radiuses. There's an article on the Tecla User Assistance website that lists a few caveats to look out for when using the setting. However, I've never really run into any issues they talk about. Maybe I'm just lucky. Your mileage may vary. Excess round segments is for profiles that were created in the sketch editor and have radius curves. The higher the number, the smoother the curves. Excess chamfer accuracy factor is, as the name implies, for chamfers. So it affects things like contour plates and polygons. Again, smaller is better. Excess cord tolerance for tube segments controls profiles such as round and elliptical pipes. The smaller the number, the better the profile will look. 
So you probably get the idea that most of these settings deal with the smoothness of curves and circles in the model and on the drawings. It's pretty easy to look them up on the TUA and get a detailed description, or if they happen to be in the advanced settings, you can select them and press F1 to open the help dialog, which is basically the TUA. I found that the values I have set get me a pretty good balance between display accuracy and performance, but you'll more than likely need to tweak these a little one way or another to find the best numbers for your system. There's a lot of factors at play, such as hardware configuration, operating system, other software, and even the amount and type of entities you normally work with. There's also one little other thing to keep in mind, and that is each individual entity is only allowed to have a maximum of 99 points. So if an object is too complex or you try to make the curves too smooth, then parts will start to fail. Not to worry though, if that happens, just dial the numbers back a bit. So that's all there is to it. Have fun playing around with these settings and search for that magic combination that gets you the ultimate display. And I'm sure that there's other settings out there that affect the display as well, so if you have any, feel free to list them in the comment section below. If there's enough of them, I might even have to make a follow-up video.